Hi everyone, so let's talk about placements. If you're in college, if you're in third year or fourth year, then you would know that the placements are right around the corner. And companies like TCS, Infosys, Wipro or Accenture have already started hiring. So how do you crack these companies? So the thing is that in these companies, the entire group, there's a very different requirement in the interviews. So the way you crack these companies is different from majority of the companies. The preparation strategy for these companies is different and the focus of preparation should be different as well. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. I'm going to give you a complete roadmap on how to crack a company like TCS, Infosys, whatever, the entire group of them. And people come to me and ask, Bhaiya, should we join a service-based company or should we not give its interview at all? So my suggestion to you is always, yes, you should appear for the interview because you should not be sitting idle. At the very least, you should try to get some offer letters. Okay. And if you want to join, you can join as well. And later you can switch to a product-based company if you want but you should not be sitting idle. So if you're non-campus placements and such companies are coming to your college, then definitely you should sit for their placements. Or even in off-campus, if you come to know of a hiring going on by such a company, then you should appear for it because like I said, you should not be sitting idle, okay? You need not start with Google at the first go. You can start with a service-based company as well, progress and then move out to a different company of your choice, okay? So like I said, the focus of preparation here is going to be different. The things you need here are namely aptitude, theoretical knowledge of subjects, you need basic programming and basic DSA, and after that you need a decent resume that will help you get selected. Now, granted, resume is not that necessary in on-campus placement because in on-campus they have different criteria like you don't need to have a, you should not have a backlog, you should have a minimum CGPA criteria, you should have minimum this marks and 12th, but if you go for off-campus, then again you should have a good resume so that you get shortlisted in the off-campus hiring, okay? So now let's go deeper into the roadmap and let's see how it is. As you can see from the roadmap itself, I've kept aptitude at the very top because for these companies, aptitude is very essential and people skip out on aptitude and they end up getting rejected in the screening round itself, okay? So I've made a lot of videos about aptitude. Recently only I made a video about aptitude. So I would highly suggest that you check it out to know about a good preparation strategy for aptitude and what are the most important topics you'll find all of that in that video okay but to see in aptitude you have three different things one is you have quantitative aptitude which is mathematical physics formula based basically then you have logical reasoning logical reasoning is basically things or questions where you require tricks okay then you have verbal aptitude which is english based question you have synonym antonym you have word meanings you have paragraph based things like that okay so aptitude is the one thing that you should absolutely pay good focus on so that you don't end up getting rejected in the screening round itself. Go watch my video for aptitude. The link is in the description. Now, like I said, aptitude is the most important part, but apart from aptitude, you also need more things. Okay. One thing that these companies focus a lot on is the subjects that you have learned while you're in engineering. Okay. So fundamental subjects, right? You have subjects like DBMS, you have computer network, you have object-oriented programming, you have operating systems. So 100% they will be asking you theoretical questions on all of these subjects. Okay, so how can you learn these topics? How can you learn these subjects? Very, very simple. The answer for you is Geeks for Geeks. So Geeks for Geeks has proper notes for all of these subjects. You don't even need to make your own notes. You can just go on Geeks for Geeks, search last minute notes DBMS, last minute notes computer network, last minute notes operating system will get a bunch of notes for the most important topics and trust me most of the questions will either be from the last minute notes or the top 50 top 100 interview questions so read about the top 100 interview questions for dbms and the last minute notes for dbms do that for the following subjects and it'll be enough for you but like i said theory is important so don't skip out on theory 110 percent they will be asking you a few basic questions on the theoretical subjects that you have learned in your engineering okay now the next thing is programming so programming we know that you need knowledge of one programming language so that can be either c plus plus java python it's totally fine you can take even any other language if you want but these are like the main languages that you know the companies are happy to see in your resume or are happy to see in your portfolio so i suggest pick one from these three only either c plus plus or java or python okay so for learning the basic Syntax of these programming languages, you can just learn from online websites. For C++ and Java, you have tutorials point, 
you have uh, Java T point Python also you can learn from W3 schools or basically any tutorial website I'll give a few resources in the description make sure that you check out the description box for the resources so either learn C++ Java or Python be good with the syntax be good with the library and after that we're going to move to DSA okay now DSA is of three types okay you have the basic DSA which is like just questions on arrays and strings and primary data types nothing else just basic mathematical array string based problem which is the basic DSA then you have standard DSA standard DSA have the standard data structures or very standard algorithms like linguist stack q hash map something like that etc very standard uh, DSA you know which you will see on lead code which have the exact same question coming in the interview then you have some advanced data structures and algorithm which are deemed a little bit difficult and are difficult to learn and solve problems of so you have in advanced data structure you have graph trees dynamic programming okay now if you go for these companies these service based companies then you will hardly be asked any advanced topic maybe if you go for tcs prime or infosys super specialist you might be asked a couple of problems from dp or graph but in general i don't think in the interview at least you will be getting any question from advance maybe like i said in prime or specialist you might get in the oa the online assessment but in interview you will not be asked advanced data structures at all okay so you can focus on these if you have time but for majority of the companies interview they will not be asking that much now basics 110 percent you'll see this in the online round you'll see this in the coding round majority of the questions you'll see in the coding round will be either based on arrays or strings or some basic mathematical concept okay so make sure that you're very good with solving problems on arrays very good with solving problems on strings okay then you have the standard data structures and algorithm this is where you'll see a majority of questions in your interview so you might be asked simple questions like like removing a linked list you know using stack q etc so these are questions that you can expect in the interview so be good with basic data structures this is very important for oa be good with standard data structures and algorithms this is very important for technical interview and advance you can learn if you have time and try to solve a few medium problems for that just so that you can also appear for prime and specialist interviews as, as well okay now coming to the last part which like I said is resume or the projects that you have in your portfolio that will help you get shortlisted in the off-campus placements on campus it's not that important trust me in on campus even if you don't have a lot of projects they will still let you appear for the interview because in on-campus the eligibility criteria itself is different okay but in off-campus it matters how your resume is so that you actually get shortlisted for the OA and the subsequent interviews okay so what should you keep in your resume to make sure that it gets selected first of all make your resume ats friendly if you don't know what ats friendly is google it up there's a lot of articles a lot of videos but basically you should have a good format in your resume pick either a single column format you know the one that majority of the people use you'll see it on a lot of videos so single column format resume you should make in your projects in your portfolio you should try to keep at least two projects okay generally i suggest keeping even one is fine but here i will highly suggest that you keep two projects one project will your will be your basic project where you can make a very basic thing like a simple project on dsa a simple game or a simple you know two three page ui ux website something very basic you can make okay then have a ace project ace project is the main project you can make it as a full stack project where you have a proper website where you have front end you have back end you have api calls and this ace project is also going to help you in your product based companies interview as well okay so make a basic project and make a ace project tech stack it doesn't matter if you have a particular role you're applying for you can keep a project similar to that role if you're in, if you're applying for a java developer keep java projects if you're paying for a react role keep full stack projects with react okay but Try to have minimum two projects where you have one ACE project and other the basic projects, which are like I said, simple either games or DSA or simple, simple things, either a simple app, a simple website, something like that. After you do this and put this in your resume along with the skills of programming, DSA, etc., then pretty much you'll have a very decent shot at getting shortlisted in the interview at off-campus stage. So this is pretty much it 
this all that i talked about is pretty much it you need nothing more than this for your preparation okay cracking a service based company is not as difficult as you might think it's pretty easy it's pretty pretty easy but your preparation strategy should be along should be aligned with what they will ask in their interview and this is what you're going to need so you can take a screenshot of it or i'll give a link in the description from there you will get this whimsical link so that's pretty much it just go to the description box see the resources start learning and you'll be able to crack all of these companies one by one so if you want more videos on this topic then do let me know in the comments if you want more i'll be making a couple of more as well so that's pretty much it thank you take a comment me like that